Welcome back to Blake's Take. I'm Blake Neiman, and I'll give you my take on local and national sports from the Lambert Valley and beyond. I hope you're all having a terrific Thursday and uh, just getting right along through your week. Uh, sorry for the little bump yesterday. Uh, starting to have some college visits, uh, Perks of Arizona State and uh, University of Oregon. So I uh, appreciate all the support out there from them uh, trying to reach out to me for uh, pursuing my career uh, and ultimately trying to reach my goal of uh, making it up there. It's ESPN with the big dogs. So uh, let's get right into this with some sports news since that is all why you guys are here so let's get right into it uh where we had many big deals going on in the nba yesterday going down with big contracts for some big moolah uh starting off with uh los angeles lakers star lebron james signing a two-year extension with the los angeles lakers for 85 million dollars uh james who let turns 36 later this month averaged 25.3 points last season and led the nba in assists with 10.2 per game he will be 38 when the contract ends this extension will make James through through the 2020-23 season, giving him 20 seasons in the NBA. He played 11 seasons with Cleveland over two stints, four with Miami Heat, and will play at least five in L.A. James is now set to make $39.2 million in the 2020-21 season, $41,180,544 in 2021-22, and $44,474,988 in 2022-2023 season. His career earnings from his NBA contracts will approach $435 million by the end of the extension, which is just outrageous to think about. His oldest son, Bronny, uh, turns... Uh, will graduate high school in 2023 and with the rules changing now uh, it could look like that Bronny and LeBron are teaming up LeBron stated in a statement that his greatest accomplishment in his NBA career would be to team up with his son so uh, that's looked like what he planned with this contract so it would expire so he can choose whatever he wants to uh, pursue with his son getting drafted so, uh, honestly, in the 2023 or 24 draft, whatever Bronny chooses to uh, either go a one and done or just a high school straight out um, like his father, we shall see because teams might approach it to where they draft Bronny first uh, first overall because they might get the, they're potentially going to get the package in LeBron. So, uh, it might be a smart investment there for a team uh, to draft Bronny first overall. But we'll see uh, how it turns out for Bronny and LeBron. Through these, throughout these next couple of seasons and in the future. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, in other contract news, we had a big deal go down between the Washington Wizards and the Houston Rockets uh, with two-star point guards in John Wall and uh, Russell Westbrook agreeing to blockbuster deals. The Wizards are sending Wall and a lottery-projected 2023 first-round draft NBA draft pick to the Rockets for Westbrook in a deal that both players wanted and have been simmering for weeks. Discussions had been stalled since mid-November, sources said, until the two general managers, Washington's Tommy Shepard and Houston's Raffle Stone, decided to get on the phone Tuesday, at thir- Tuesday afternoon and then worked out the deal within hours. For the Wizards and Rockets, there's hope that the exchange of guards will play a role in convincing the two franchise shooting guards on each team, Washington's Brady Beal and Houston's James Harden, to want to stay long-term with their teams. Harden has privately asked for a trade, and Beal could become a free agent in 2021. So we shall see if the two shooting guards uh, stay along with this point guard switch of teams. Uh, We'll see how the chemistry works out for them and uh, if Harden and Bradley Beal want to pursue other options in the NBA because they have the capability with their all-star status and what they've established in the league, especially for Harden. So uh, we'll see how it turns out for both of those guys and both of the point guards and see if the change in environment and teams uh, plays a role in their performance. So we'll see how it goes. As far as NFL goes, we had a close game last night in the AFC North on the rare Wednesday night football game. This is only the second Wednesday night football game ever in uh, NFL history. So uh, it was pretty interesting to watch in on Wednesday night. Most people probably didn't even know about it. Uh, the Ravens versus Steelers game become uh, become uh, the second NFL game in modern history. So it's uh, crazy to th- just think about that historic status. Uh s- Several star players such as Lamar Jackson, James Conner, and Mark Ingram uh, 
and Mark Andrews were all out in this game due to COVID-19. So unfortunate losses on both sides of the team for uh, them in this game. So it was unfortunate that they lost both of our star pieces. But we still got a game of it, out of it. Uh, starting off with uh, Jarthy, J- RG3 would get the start and uh, have a terrible, terrible start actually with him throwing a pick to Joe Hayden that would be run back for six to take the early lead. Yet he would come out strong on the next drive and push down the field and ultimately cap it off with a touchdown to take back the lead. The Steelers would then have two field goals in the second quarter to take the 12-7 to lead at halftime. That lead would kind of just stay the same, and neither team would improve in the third uh, with each team not even scoring a single point. At the start of the fourth, though, Roethlisberger would connect with Juju Smith-Schuster for the touchdown and to help extend their lead. Then with uh, RG3, a hamstring injury, and uh, Lamar out to COVID, Penn State alum Trace McSorley would come in and throw a dime to Hollywood Brown, who would make defenders look silly with his cutbacks and ultimately convert it to a 70-yard touchdown score and give McSorley his first career touchdown pass, so great there. Uh, unfortunately, though, the Ravens just couldn't get a stop on defense, and the the Steelers would hang on and uh, remain undefeated on the season. So close call for the Steelers, though. They've had a couple of those this season and are 2-0 and in the series versus the Ravens this year. So great win for the Steelers, and hopefully they can uh, just c- continuing to cap up their AFC North campaign into the divisional round and hopefully uh, an AFC championship to go on to the Super Bowl. But we'll see how they get that goes uh, for those two teams. As far as local sports, both the Bees and Ducks basketball teams lost last night. Unfortunately, the number 21 ranked Ducks were, uh, were upset by Missouri, 83-75, uh, to and the Bees took the loss against Washington State, 59-55. to So unfortunate losses. Close one for the Bees, not so close for the Ducks, actually. Um, so poor performances uh, by the Ducks, especially. But we'll see how they bounce back in their next game and see if they can come out stronger uh, in their performance. So that's all I have for you today for Blake's Take. Uh, Hope you got some good sports information out of that. Some huge shoot trades, huge action in the uh, college basketball getting back in action, and uh, huge action in the NFL on Wednesday night. So I hope you all enjoyed that little news, and uh, you can catch me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and or YouTube. And I hope you all have a great Easter night, and I'll see you tomorrow.